I'm Mike Adams with National Training Incorporated. I'm going to conduct a CDL pre-trip inspection. The first step in a successful pre-trip inspection is to obtain your state CDL handbook. You can obtain the Florida handbook from our website, truckschool.com. Click on CDL testing and you will find the link for the state handbook. The current handbook for Florida, this is 2021. The current handbook is 2019, it is current. You have to check the state website to make sure you have the current handbook to conduct a successful pre-trip inspection. Your test examiner will read you instructions for the test you'll be taking. You will be told during the vehicle inspection, you must show that the vehicle is safe to drive. You will have to walk around the vehicle name and point to or touch each item and explain to the examiner what you're checking and why. I am using the state manual to give you this demo. On your test, you will not be allowed to have the manual with you. You will be allowed to have the vehicle inspection memory aid, which will be provided to you. The first step in the pre-trip inspection is your approach to the vehicle. On the approach, we're going to be checking your light lens caps and reflectors. You're going to identify the position of each lens cap and the reflectors and give proper description. Later on in the inspection, you will be doing an operational light check, but for now, we're only checking the lens cap. So identify all of your light positions and give proper description. Here we have on top of the windshield, we have our clearance lights. On the front here, we have our headlight positions, high beam, low beam, our marker light, and our amber reflector. On the sides of the hood, we have our turn signals. Check all of those positions and you will check that they are clean, they are not damaged, they are not missing, and they are the proper color for their position on the vehicle. A headlight will be clear in color, all other lights to the front will be amber in color. Additionally, you would check for puddles of fluid underneath the front of the vehicle. Engine compartment inspection. We're starting on the passenger side of the vehicle and we're gonna do leaks and hoses. We're looking for the side of the motor and the side of the transmission for leaks. Additionally, we're looking for puddles on the ground on the side of the engine. In the engine compartment area, we're looking at all hoses for their kit condition and we're looking for leaks on those hoses. We're going to check on the side of the engine compartment leaks and hoses. So on the side of the engine and the side of the transmission we look for leaks and puddles on the ground. Also all hoses in the engine compartment area we would check for their condition and that they are no, there are no leaks. Now we're going to inspect engine accessories. With all engine accessories, you have to determine if the accessory is belt or gear driven. In this case, we have a belt driven alternator here. We're going to make sure that the alternator is securely mounted and that the charging cables are securely attached to the alternator. This is a belt driven alternator we have to check two things on belts, tightness and condition. For tightness, the deflection should be no more than one half to three quarter inch when you push on the belt. Condition, there should be no cuts, frays, loose fibers, or excessive wear on the belt. Okay, now we're gonna inspect the exhaust system from the turbocharger on the side of the motor back, okay? We're looking at the clamps and the tubing and we follow it all the way under the cab, under the cab of the truck, back to the stack. Okay, we're coming up to the stack, okay? So what we're checking for on the exhaust system, we're checking for damage and signs of leak, such as rust or carbon soot. The exhaust system, uh, also we're looking for, shouldn't have any cracks or holes or severe dent. A severe dent would be something uh, that where it is bent far enough that it can't pro the air can't properly flow. Uh, we're also looking that the system is connected tightly and mounted securely. So it is mounted securely to the truck by the connecting brackets. It's also connected tightly together. 
is fitted together tightly. So I'm checking that the clamps are holding the pieces together and that the whole system is firmly attached to the truck itself. Most of the pre-trip inspection will be conducted on the driver's side of the vehicle. In our engine compartment on the driver's side, first we're gonna go back to fluids. On this particular truck, most of the fluids are located on the driver's side of the, of the engine compartment. In some trucks, they will be split between both sides. So first we're gonna check our coolant level. Coolant reservoir must have adequate level above the refill line. Then we would check our oil level. We would pull the stick, check the fluid level. It must be above the refill line. On the test, you do not have to pull the, pull the dipstick. You just describe it. We would go to power steering and check for proper power steering level. The power steering fluid should be above the refill line. Okay, now we're gonna check engine accessories on the driver's side of the engine compartment. We're gonna start with the water pump. On this particular engine design, the water pump is on this side. Then we move to, we're going to move to the power steering pump and the air compressor. On this particular engine design, you cannot see from this vantage point the uh, air compressor and the power steering pump. They are on the bottom right side of the engine compartment, but you have the same exact description. They are gear driven, properly mounted, not leaking, not damaged, and operating properly steering system. For the steering box, we're going to make sure that it's properly mounted and not leaking. We're going to check for any missing nuts or bolts. Steering hoses, we're going to check for condition and no leaks. Steering linkage, for the steering linkage it is a three-piece system. One, two, three. Uh, you can refer to it as the steering linkage. For steering linkages, Make sure that the connecting links and arms and rods from the steering box to the wheel are not worn or cracked. Check that the joints and sockets are not worn or loose and that there are no missing nuts, bolts, or cotter keys on the steering linkage. Suspension system. This particular truck has a uh, leaf spring suspension system on the front axle. We're first gonna check the spring mounts. We have a spring mount on the front and a spring mount on the rear. For the spring mounts, we're checking for cracked or broken spring mounts, uh, missing or damaged bushings, and then any spring accessories that are helping attach the spring to the mount, we have to check for damages. The leaf springs themselves, we look for missing, shifted, cracked or broken leaf springs. Our U-bolts, the U-bolts should not be cracked, loose, or missing. Shock absorber, the shock absorber should be securely mounted on both ends and it is not leaking. Okay, brake system. Brake system starts with the brake hoses. Identify your brake hose. On each end, the hose is attached to the vehicle with a coupling. Make sure you check the coupling. It is secure, not damaged, and it's not leaking. The brake hose, you look for cracked, worn, or leaking hoses. From the brake hose, you move to your brake chamber. See that the brake chamber is not leaking, cracked, or dented, and it is mounted securely. Also, make sure you have no loose or missing clamps. This particular truck has a rotor and pad, okay? So for the rotor, you make sure you have no cracks, dents, or holes, no loose or missing bolts, and that you have no excessive wear on the brake pad. Now we're gonna inspect the wheel system. On our rubber tire, for a steer axle on a commercial vehicle, you have to have a minimum of 432 seconds tread depth. 
We would also check the tread wear for even wear on the tire, okay? Tire condition, um, we look for cuts or other damage on the tread and sidewalls. Inflation, with an air gauge, we would check for proper inflation of the tire. The air valve stem should not be damaged, loose, or missing. Then we go to the rim. The rim cannot be bent, damaged, or no welds on the rim. The rim also, we look for streaks. In this case, it's an aluminum rim, so we would look for oxidation streaks that could indicate uh, looseness. Our lug nuts, we're checking that all the lug nuts are present. They're free of cracks and distortion. The lug holes are free of cracks and distortions, and they're all tight. Hub oil seal, hub oil seal, if it has a sight glass, you check for adequate level and you make sure that it is not leaking oil. Now we start the walk around. The walk around starts at the driver's door and we'll work all the way down the driver's side of the vehicle. Starting with the door and the mirrors. The mirror brackets should be properly mounted and not damaged. The mirrors themselves should not be damaged. The driver's door, we look for obvious damage on the door. We make sure that the door opens and closes properly, latches are working. Inside the door, we make sure that the door hinges are mounted securely and that all of the seals are in place. Now we're going to talk about the steps to the cab of the truck. The steps should be solid, free of any loose objects, and securely mounted to the truck. This particular truck has a DEF tank. In the DEF tank, we have to ensure that it has a minimum one-eighth tank of DEF fluid. Then we go to our fuel tank. Our fuel tank has to have has to be properly mounted to the vehicle with both straps. The cap should be tight. The tank should not have any leaks on the tank itself or the hoses. Coming into our coupling area, we're going to begin with our steps and catwalk. The steps and catwalk must be solid properly attached to the vehicle, free of loose objects. Now we're going to talk about the frame of the truck. The longitudinal frame should be free of cracks, holes, broken welds, or other damage. The frame and cross members. Now we're going to talk about the drive shaft. The drive shaft here between the frame rails is not bent or cracked. The couplings are secure and free of any foreign debris. Now we're getting into the truck coupling system. So we're going to start here at the back of the cab. We have our air hoses. We're checking the couplings. We're making sure that the couplings are securely mounted to the tractor. We check our electrical line. And we make sure that the pigtail is securely connected and plugged in and locked. On the trailer side, we're looking at our air lines and our electrical lines. The, the air glad hands are securely mounted. They are not leaking. The rubber grommets are in place. Any of the fittings, nothing is leaking. The electrical line is plugged properly into the trailer and securely latched into place. Now we're checking the air and electrical hoses. The hoses should not be cut, chafed, spliced, taped. They should not be pinched, crimped, or dragging against the frame of the truck. The electrical line should not have no exposed wires. Okay, now we're talking about the fifth wheel connector. Underneath the trailer, the flat metal is called the apron. The apron should not be bent, cracked, or broken. There should be no gap between the apron and the skid plate. The skid plate should be properly greased and it should be securely attached to the platform with all the mounting pins in place. Okay, the release handle is pushed in in the engaged position. If the release handle is equipped with a safety latch, the safety latch must be engaged. The platform should not be cracked or broken, no damaged mounting brackets. 
The fifth wheel slide. Locking pins must be engaged in the slide. The slide actuator air hose should not be leaking and the slide actuator should not have any loose or missing pins. Additionally, you should have proper space on either side of the fifth wheel for articulation. Now you would go behind the fifth wheel connector and you would check the locking jaws. You would make sure the locking jaw or lever is locked around the king pin, locking it in position. The king pin should not be bent or damaged. When a unit has tandem axles or two axles, we only have to inspect one. So I'm going to inspect the front axle. Technically, if I've already described an item on another axle, like the tire here is the same as the tire on the front axle, I only have to call out the part names, okay? So I want to go through the systems on this axle. We have a suspension system, a brake system, and a wheel system. Starting with the suspension system, this is an air ride suspension. So our parts on the uh, air ride suspension is we have a mounting bracket here. The mounting bracket is not cracked or broken. The bushings are not missing or damaged. The control arm is not cracked, broken, or damaged. The U-bolts are not loose or missing or damaged. The shock absorber is mounted securely on both ends and not leaking. This has an airbag on the rear. The airbag is not damaged or leaking. It is securely mounted on both the top and the bottom. The mounting brackets are firmly secured and not damaged. This air brake system uh, is a rotor and pad like the front axle. So we have the air, we have to check our airline and the couplings. Uh, the airlines aren't damaged, cracked, worn, leaking. The couplings are not leaking. The brake chamber is securely mounted. It's not cracked, dented, no holes, no leaks. No loose or missing clamps around the outside of the, of the uh, brake chamber. The rotor and pads, the rotor should not be, no cracks, dents, or holes. No loose or missing bolts, mounting bolts. Also, the pads should not have excessive wear on them. Then we will go into our tires. We have two tire systems here. This is a dual set, so the in, inner tire and outer tire, we're looking at minimum two thirty seconds tread depth, even wear on both tires. We would look at the space between our tires and there should be free of debris. We come out to the outside, we check the valve stems. The valve stems are not loose or missing or damaged. We would check for proper air pressure in both tires with an air gauge. The rim is not bent, damaged, no welds, no signs of loose, uh, loose lugs like streaks, like oxidation or rust streaks. Also, the lug nuts are securely mounted. They're tight. There's no signs of looseness like streaks or shiny threads. There's no cracks or distortions on the lugs or the lug nut holes. The axle cap is not leaking oil. On the very rear of the tractor, we have our splash guard, which is securely mounted and not damaged. We have the lens caps for the rear of the tractor. They are red in color. Uh, they are clean. They're not damaged. They're not missing. And they represent the tail lights, left and right turn signal, four-way flashers, and brake lights. Now we're going to inspect the trailer. We start at the very front, which is the header board or the bulkhead on a, on a box van. Uh, on the bulkhead, we got to make sure it's free of damage and it'll hold the cargo. Uh, we're looking for any cracks, dents, or bulges, any loose or missing rivets on the, on the bulkhead. Then we would go up into the top corner on both sides and we would look for our clearance lights, okay? They're just clearance lamps and we're checking that they are clean, they are not damaged, 
They're not missing and they're the proper color for their location. Now you're working the side of the trailer. You're looking at the body in general for damage. There should be no holes, bulges, loose rivets. It should be able to contain the cargo. Look for your reflective tape, red and white alternating reflective tape should be affixed to the vehicle and clean. Now we're gonna talk about the trailer frame. We have the longitudinal frame down the length of the trailer and the cross members. We should make sure that there are no cracks, holes, damages, or broken welds and loose rivets. Trailer landing gear. Make sure the landing gear is fully raised, has no missing parts, the crank handle is secure, and the support frame and landing pads, these are landing pads, are not damaged. Here we have a side lens. Lens is amber in color, it's clean, it's not damaged or missing. Okay, now we're gonna check our tandem release. This is an air actuated tandem release, so we wanna make sure that it is locked in the lock position and that our locking pins are engaged in the rail. Again, on a dual axle set, we only have to do one axle. And if we've already described everything, we just call out the part names, okay? So here we have a suspension system, a brake system, and a wheel system. The suspension system, this is air ride, just like our, our tractor drives are. So the air ride suspension, We'll be checking the brackets, the control arm and the bushings, the U-bolts, and, and the shock absorbers. For the brake system, we have our brake hoses, our brake chamber. This does have a slack adjuster and push rod, so the slack adjuster and push rod should not move more than one inch with the brakes released. It should be properly mounted and locking pins should be locked into place, no loose or missing parts. Our dual wheel set, we would check both, both dual tires, 230 seconds minimum on our tread depth, even wear, no debris between the tires, proper condition on the tires, proper air pressure. We check our rims. We check our lug nuts and we check our hub oil cap. Okay, trailer splash guard. It is securely mounted and not damaged. On the rear of the side of the trailer, we have our rear side marker and our ABS light. On these lenses are clean. They're not damaged, they're not missing and they're the proper color for their position. Okay, at the rear of the vehicle, we're gonna check that our doors and hinges are not damaged. They work properly, they open, close, and latch. Our latch is here. This is a sliding door on this unit here. Uh, some units will have folding doors and you would make sure they open and latch properly. Our light bar across the rear of the vehicle. Uh, we have multifunctional lights here. They serve as tail lights. We have our clearance lights at the top of the vehicle, LED uh, clearance lights. The outer lights, they all, uh, they all service as, as, uh, as tail lights for the vehicle. The outer lights are turn signals and flashers. The inners are brake, brake lights. The reflective tape, red and white reflective tape is affixed to the vehicle and it is clean. Okay, now we check our emergency equipment that we have on the truck. Starting with our fire extinguisher, which is securely mounted and properly charged. On the other side of the cab mounted to the floor, we have our three red reflective triangles and we have a fuse box. We, can, we hold one spare fuse for each type used on the vehicle. Before the in-cab inspection, you will do a fully operational light check. You will turn on your lights all the way around the truck and check them all for operation. Identify all your light positions and, and see that they're operational. The examiner can assist you with this. Ask your examiner to assist, and you can stay in the truck. They will check the lights for you, or you can get out of the vehicle and check them yourself. That is your decision. Okay, we're gonna start our in-cab inspection. First, we start with the seat belt. The seat belt, you have to make sure that it's adjustable. It moves back and forth. It's not cut or frayed. 
and that when we get in the seat, we'll lock it in and make sure it locks into place. Okay, getting in the cab of the truck, the first thing I'm gonna do is latch my seat belt. Okay, and it latches and secure. Then I'm gonna do a safe start. I'm gonna make sure my parking brakes are set, depress my clutch, make sure I'm in the neutral position. When I turn my key on, I'm gonna first look for my ABS light to come on. ABS come on, I'm gonna wait for the ABS to go out. I have ABS on my trailer, so I'm looking to see if the ABS is continuing to be illuminated. If the, if the ABS is in continuous illumination, I have an ABS problem. If it goes out as it did, I'm okay. Now I'm gonna crank the truck. The, the uh, truck did its uh, self check. When it cranks, the first thing I'm gonna do is check my oil pressure. I need to see that the oil pressure is rising to normal operating range. I'm looking at my water temperature to make sure I'm at normal operating range for my uh, coolant temperature. I need to make sure that the voltmeter, that the battery is charging. I have a DEF gauge on this truck. I have at least one eighth of a tank of DEF. Air pressure. I have to make sure my air pressure builds to governor cutout, which is 120 to 140 psi in that range. Okay, so I'll be listening for the air to cut out outside the vehicle. I'm going to continue to work across my dash, looking at all of my gauges to make sure they appear operational, nothing's damaged or broken, none of my knobs or switches are broken. Parking brake switches are okay. I'm looking for my heater defroster. I'm gonna turn it to the defrost position and the heat position, turn on the air, make sure it blows air up top, turn it to a heat position, make sure it blows air on the bottom. That back to AC. Okay, now I'm going to move over to uh, my steering wheel. In the center of the steering wheel, I have my electric horn. Okay. I also have my air horn. On the left side of my steering column, I have my turn signal uh, indicator switch. I'm going to check my left turn signal on the dash, right turn signal four-way flashers, and I'm going to pull for a high beam indicator. I have my blue high beam indicator. Also, my turn signal controls my windshield wipers, so I would check the wiper arms to make sure they're not bent or broken. It's keeping the blade against the glass. The glass is not cracked or dry rotted, not frayed or missing. The uh, blades I'm going to turn them on to make sure it operates. I'm going to push my button in and check for, for uh, water. I have my spray, water spray on the glass and it is operating correctly. And now I'm going to go to my windshield glass. The glass is not cracked, broken or missing. There's no illegal stickers blocking my view. I would check my rear view mirrors, make sure the mirrors are adjusted to me. Now we're going to start our air brake checks. The first thing we're going to check is our parking brake. We're going to do a parking brake test, okay? So our parking brakes, we're literally going to put the truck in gear and tug against the brakes to see if the brakes are holding the vehicle in place. But we have to isolate the brakes, otherwise we're not sure which one's holding. So what we're going to do is we're going to press clutch brake. We're going to put it in first gear. This is a 10-speed transmission. I'm going to release the, tra the trailer brake. Okay, we're on flat ground, so we don't have to worry about anything moving on us. So I'm going to release the trailer brake, and I'm just going to slowly ease up on my clutch till I feel some torque on my tractor. Right, right there. Okay, our, our brakes are holding. Now I'm going to set my trailer brake and release my tractor brake. 
I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to watch my trailer in the mirror. Ease up until okay, my trailer brakes are holding. Okay. So now I'm going to release both brakes. And I'm going to roll forward at 5 miles per hour. I'm going to firmly apply the brake. And I'm going to loosely hold my wheel to see if my wheel jerks to one side or the other. Okay, I'm going to move forward. Okay. And I'm going to push the clutch in and apply a firm brake. Okay, the vehicle stopped immediately and the wheel did not pull one way or the other. Now I'm going to back back into my position. Flashers, sound the horn. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm stopping here. So I'm going to leave the leave the buttons pushed in. I'm going to go to neutral and I'm going to release the brake. Okay? The engine's still running. What I want to do is build my air pressure to governor cutout. 120 to 140. So I'm going to raise the RPMs and I'm going to listen for governor cutout outside the vehicle. Okay, the air just released outside the vehicle, so I know I'm at governor cutout. I'm going to cut my truck off, the engine off. I'm cutting the engine off so the air compressor can't continue to run and mask an air leak, okay? I'm going to turn my key on to accessory so that my dash has power. My buttons, again, are released. They're pushed in, so that means my spring brakes are charged with air. I'm in a combination vehicle. I'm going to apply my service brake. I'm going to apply the brake. I'm going to let the brake steady out, the brake gauge steady out. It's steady. And now I'm going to time for one minute, and I cannot lose more than four PSI in one minute. In one minute, we did not lose more than four PSI, and we can release the brake. Now, we're going to check for the, our low air warning. We're going to fan the brake down and at no less than 55 PSI, our alarm, our audible and visual alarm is going to come on. So I'm going to fan the brake. Brake air alarm came on around 60 PSI. I can hear it and see it. Now I'm going to continue to fan the brake down and around 40 PSI, my buttons are going to pop back out. And the buttons have popped out, and that completes my air brake inspection.